What's going on, chess friends? It's Rafi Chowdhury here today and um, here with another video. And what I wanted to share with you guys today is a little bit about um, basically answering a question, which is um, which I get asked quite often. And um, that is, you know, people are asking if the chess.com ratings are accurate. So what by that, they're probably referring, what they're really asking is, you know, whether chess.com ratings to some extent are, um, you know, do they correspond with their USCF, United States Chess Federation, or their FIDE ratings? Um, and the answer to that question is, um, depends on, on several factors. Um, there is no exact answer to that question. I think for some people, it definitely does correspond. I do think there's a linear relationship. Um, there's definitely a, a a, you know, a, a correlation between between chess.com ratings and USCF ratings. If you have a higher USCF rating, you'll probably have a higher US uh, or chess.com rating as well. But I don't know if there's necessarily a direct um, relationship between the two ratings either. So um, while we talk a little bit more about the rating system, uh, I want to go ahead and play a, uh, a, a game here on, on chess.com. So, uh, so let's do that. So let's do a new game. And uh, let's do a five-minute game, and then yeah, we'll play a rated game against against an opponent here. So let's go. Okay, looks like we've got somebody here, and uh, looks like our timer has started. So let's make our first move. So we're playing a sixteen hundred rated player. So that's great. Oh, aborted. Okay, well let's play another one. Okay, we're playing a 1700 this time. So we're going to go ahead and play the King's uh, Indian with uh, g6, bishop G g7. Now we're going to play d6. We're going to go ahead and get castled up. Um, then we're going to play this bishop out first. We are going to play this knight b to d7. Let's do pawn to c5. Let's go ahead and, and draw our knight back. And so, yeah, so this kind of opening typically, um, you know, white wants to get some moves like c5 in there and uh, just, yeah, just crush open the center. Um, at a later time, after getting the pieces developed first, then you strike directly at the center. <laughs> That's the main idea here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my queen here. So I'm attacking the b2 pawn. I'm also, if, if he takes here, um, I can... I would have had some ideas of... of um, maybe taking back with a pawn. So now I'm thinking, how can we go ahead and continue developing our pieces? Let's go ahead and take here. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the most ideal Ideal capture. Now that I played the move, I'm not really liking it so much anymore. Mm. We're in a bit of trouble because this a a7 pawn is really weak now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take again. Just trying to expose some of these pawns here as much as we can. And um, yeah, we might go ahead and play this. Well, probably played this move first. We do have to be careful that our queen doesn't get trapped in, though.
He's probably thinking about some sort of queen trap ideas here. Um, I mean, if we're not careful, there's definitely queen traps here, but I think for the most part, our position is solid. We do, uh, we could use a little bit more space, but I think for the time being, um, if we can play something like knight to c7, knight to e6, rook to d8, I think we'll have a great position. So if he does that, we may bring our bishop here, and then we're going to put the bishop on this diagonal. <clears throat> we could also play knight c7, knight d5. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bishop on this diagonal first. And he might play c5 here, or c4 rather. So I think think I can grab this pawn, honestly. Okay, I see. He didn't capture back. So now... We can... Um, see what happens oh we just dropped a pawn maybe no we didn't i think we might still be okay so yeah we're gonna go ahead and pre-move this capture because if he takes we're definitely taking on uh on g7 And try and think of how we can maybe get our queen back into the game again. I'm going to go ahead and take this with check. Take that one also. Then I'm going to play this move. Since we're up a pawn, I want to go ahead and trade some pieces off to just to get the piece. Um, Let's go ahead and take this guy. Just to relieve some pressure from the position. Now we're going to go ahead and get our rooks into the game as well. Um, I think we can go ahead and get this guy into the game as well. And now I'm going to go ahead and use my queen to defend. I can probably go for this where I'm giving up the rook for the two. Two rooks for the queen. Now I'm going to go ahead and make some more trades. Now I'm going to offer, oh, I almost lost the queen. I mean, a, a, a piece, not the queen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and reroute our pieces just a little bit. Maybe don't want to play that yet. Maybe let's go ahead and just improve this piece. And we're also threatening a fork on G3 now. So now that he does that, I'm thinking maybe just thinking of ways to try to trade some pieces at this point, really, and just minimize his attacking chances and just be up a solid pawn. I feel like that would be a good strategy to finish the game here. So yeah, if he takes, I'm going to take back with my knight, and I'm protecting the knight. And also, yeah, I think he pretty much has to trade queens with me now. 
it's, it's pretty much four. So if he doesn't trade, then I'm getting into G3 and it's going to get real complicated. So we have the extra pawn now. Um, so now we just have to be able to able to um, show and prove our advantage. And we don't have that much time exactly to be able to do it either. So we have to do it very quickly. So now we're going to go ahead and start attacking some of these pawns. You can take this one first. Now we're going to protect this guy. And then we're going to attack some of his other pawns. Attack this one. Oh, he's got a good move. Oof. Yeah, we had to give up that pawn, unfortunately, because this e7 is very weak. Oh, interesting move. Just going to hold on to everything. Hmm. Try and see now if we can attack some other weaknesses. And then now we can maybe start to push some of our pawns. Let's go ahead and defend it first. Yeah, so he ran out of time here. Uh, we kind of got lucky. Well, we didn't get lucky, but, you know, it's a good game. Um, so, yeah, um, overall, this game was pretty fun, I think. Um, we got to analyze, we got to a night end game. And it was pretty interesting. But what I want to focus on a little bit is not so much this game, but just going back to the chess.com ratings versus regular ratings. There was a chart that I found at some point. Um, there we go, something like this. So, yeah, I'm drinking milk. Um, this chart kind of shows you um, I, I don't know where exactly this data was collected from or who did the collection, but I, I found this on a, on a uh, what do you call it, a Lee Chess, like a thread of some type. And I want to say this is not actually, this is not bad. It's actually pretty accurate, to be honest with you guys. So if you're looking at the comparisons, um, so most people are looking at their blitzchess.com uh, rating. And so my blitz chess rating, I think what it was at four seventeen forty seven is what I remember seeing. So if you look at this, and if I go to the say I go to seventeen forty seven blitz chess dot com blitz. Can I not click on these? Hmm. Anyway. So 1747 blitz and uh, somewhere somewhere around here. And uh, if I were to calculate, let's see which column is the USCF regular would be column G. So we're looking at G. What is it? G29. So that would be somewhere around here. I wish you could highlight, gosh. This is a G column right here. So there we go, G29. So that's, according to this, 1750 Blitz Chess.com rating is roughly about a 1780 USCF um, uh, regular rating, and then um, roughly a 1730 FIDE rating. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much accurate, honestly. You know, I think that's that's close to being accurate. But obviously, you cannot directly compare because, you know, some people are not good at blitz. I mean, they may be fantastic chess players, long chess players, but in blitz, they're not the greatest chess players. Um, but the other thing to rem keep in mind also is that the ratings really are just a, a, a reflection of the pool of players um, in, within that system, rating system. So the pool of players in USCF is very different from chess.com. Chess.com has a probably a larger pool of players, I would say. Um, and also you have to think, continue, you know, take into account 
that a lot of people on when they play online they play speed chess and they play shorter games they don't really want to play longer games so it's hard to understand the strength of people on these sites on longer time controls and also a lot of people don't play online as seriously as they might in real life so there's all of those different factors that go into it but i do think there's some sort of correlation between the ratings obviously so i would imagine that typically someone who's you know rated 2000 you know, rated 200 points higher than somebody else in USCF will probably likely also be 200 points or so higher um, on their chess.com ratings. But again, like I said, it, it fluctuates, it vary, varies quite a bit. Um, and it's very hard to make a direct correlation. But I think this uh, chart right here will be very helpful for you guys. I am going to go ahead and share this chart in the YouTube um, comments uh, in the description. So yeah, go ahead and comment and let me know what you guys think, what your ratings are. Uh, I would love to get some feedback from you guys on what your uh, 